Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. It's really nice to see you again and be back in the garden. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since we last showed you round. Um, we've been really busy. We went on holiday and we had a really bad case of uh, virus that I'm just recovering from now. So finally uh, feeling well enough to get out here and show you round. In our last few videos, I've been letting you know about some exciting news and uh, within the next month, I'll be able to let you know exactly what that is. So please watch this space, but I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to share just a couple more weeks and then I can let you know what that is. I thought I'd start up here in the orchard so we can kind of celebrate No Mo May, uh, which you can probably tell we've taken part in. <laughs> um, in this area, we not only do No Mo May, but we basically don't mow for most of the year. We give it one mow around September time just to kind of get it short again so I can start adding some bulbs and just tweaking it a little bit but for the most part it is wild so you can see at the moment we've got this amazing cow parsley which uh, flowers for a longer time than you'd expect it's been looking really good for about 10 days now um, you can see the poppies that we added recently are doing well too so that was my test with some oriental poppies to see if they will survive in the grass kind of setting um, and so far so good so we'll see if those come back next year but I've got a good feeling about them um, I can see four flowers at the moment and they're gorgeous I love um, adding a bit of colour in amongst all this white froth while I'm standing here, I can hear so many bees and insects um, and that's what No Mo May is all about. I can see a butterfly over there, just about making a habitat where things can live and thrive and it can take care of itself and just observe it and enjoy it. Um, we have mown other areas of our garden, but we've got another mini meadow, which you might be familiar with closer to the house. Um, but that's the way we do No Mo May. It's not the whole garden, but a big chunk of it. I know some of you in the comments do think that no mow May feels a bit pointless if you come up here right after May and mow everything down. And I do agree, so it's nice to have some bits that you leave long for a long time um, anyway. But that's the orchard. Looks like we'll have a good year for apples. If you look closely at the trees, we haven't lost um, any of the fruit. Um, last couple of years, we had some late frosts that meant apples were quite difficult for us up here. Looks like it's gonna be a really good year for figs as well, which is lovely. We've got some huge ones on the tree and that's just the best. I love figs so much. Um, kind of tempted to put in another tree at some point because they're just so nice when you grow them yourself. We're gonna do a few garden jobs today as well because we are at the point where the greenhouse is full, the polytunnel needs full filling, we need to just have a good shuffle and organise and then sow some more seeds. So we can go and do that in a minute. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a few more things that are flowering at the moment because this is a really lovely time of year and it's just so good to take everything in and appreciate the things that are in flower. I thought we'd stop here because I promised last time I would show you these alliums and they're just starting to flower at the moment and I love alliums, they flower for such a long time. These are Mount Everest um, and they're definitely on my list for something I'm going to add more of in the autumn because there's not quite enough of them to have a really dramatic impact but they're lovely nonetheless. The bees love them and then they'll have gorgeous seed heads that will last for weeks after the flowers are finished. The other thing I wanted to show you were our irises and unfortunately I don't know the names of the irises um, because I bought them from Facebook Marketplace and I just went to someone's garden and he dug them up and gave them to us at the start of our journey. That's kind of one of the ways that I've been getting cheap plants to fill the garden with. So if you do know the names, let me know. Um, I know there's one here that's called Jane Phillips and that's just <laughs> the full extent of what I know. But we've got these gorgeous pale purple ones and these are my favourite. Um, and we've also got some Dutch irises as well, which are slightly smaller and don't have the rhizomes. They have a bulb instead. Those ones are called Silver Beauty. Um, again, that's something I'm going to top up in the autumn because the numbers are dwindling a bit now since I've been moving things about in this bed. But same story, gorgeous soft purple colour. And when you come out here in the evening, they just look amazing. The way that the light kind of goes through the petals is magic. We have a few peonies in flower as well, which are looking really lovely, waiting on the rest of them, but it won't be long. Um, they look like they're just about ready to open. Got this gorgeous Lunaria at the back, um, a really tall kind of wispy cottage garden flower. First time growing it and I really like it. So I'm hoping that one spreads quite well and makes a nice clump over time. Um, I will be showing you roses probably in the next week or two. Um, they're all kind of getting ready to flower, but not quite ready. So I'll do a separate rose video where I show you how those are doing this year. I did make one last year, um, but I'm just so excited to show you how much progress there's been even in one year. Um, it's gonna be amazing. So stay tuned for that too. But one thing you might notice about this area are we've got a lot of gaps to fill. 
and in the interest of keeping costs down I've been um, sowing things from seed so I've got lots of annuals um, and I've, I've got lots of perennials too just to try and get these filled on a tight budget so um, next I think we can go in the small greenhouse and we'll get organizing those I've got things that need to go to the allotment things that need to go in the borders clear some space and then we can sow some seeds to get the next wave of plants ready so let's get in there and start organizing so here we are in the small greenhouse and as you can see it's completely full and I need I need to clear some space so that I can start sowing things like beans another round of peas um, etc so um, I've got three categories of things that I'm going to be taking out and showing to you and organizing one is uh, things that have been lost to slug damage so um, I'm just going to remove those to free up some space the first thing is my cucumbers they all got munched um, everything we lost to slugs is in the same area so I guess there's probably a slug hiding under one of these pots that's just been eating things but it was hard to keep on top of it while we were on holiday so um, unfortunately we have had a few losses there um, so we've got the cucumbers, six cosmos all eaten by slugs they seem to have really loved the cosmos this year um, one did survive and we've got more in the polytunnel so that's lucky Another cosmos that's been munched, but it's still surviving, so I might leave that one in. A whole tray of sweet corn. I don't know if slugs eat that, but something's eaten it. Um, there's a bit of basil in the same tray that I'll be keeping, but I'm going to take that out um, just to organise later. We did have three plants that survived, but um, as you know, you have to plant sweet corn in a grid to pollinate it, so I'm not sure if it's worth growing such a small amount. So I'm going to take these out, put them away. I've also lost a whole tray of nasturtiums. Not sure what's eaten those, but something has. So those are going to be coming out too. I think it's good to know that everyone has uh, losses in the garden and to do some kind of honest reflecting. Because um, a lot of what you see on social media is quite perfectionist and makes you feel a bit competitive and like you're not good enough. So when you see that everyone has uh, problems, that's kind of reassuring. So um, we'll retry nasturtiums. And sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes you have a good year for something, the next year might be bad. It's just one of those things and you don't have uh, much control over it. But that is our slug damage um, kind of taken care of for now. Um, it does seem strange when you have things in here like these amazing cabbages that you know a slug would just love, lots of fresh new growth on there and they haven't touched them for some reason they've gone in that corner and eaten the cosmos um, so it's hard to make sense of it but the next category of things are things we're going to take to the allotment um, so that's where Aaron grows veg because we don't have um, much more space here so I'm going to send some things there squash was another thing I had slug damage on this year when I was trying to get the seedlings going so um, hopefully the ones that have survived are kind of stronger um, but you can see they're doing really well um, they'll do they'll do fine in the ground when they're that big I've just done loads of different varieties lots of things that are new to me just to see what happens because that's quite exciting um, got a courgette for him to have at the allotment because I've already got three in the garden not sure how we're going to eat that much courgette but there you go um, I will give him a cucumber to try outside as well. I have got three other cucumbers in here that are going to go in the polytunnel, um, but we'll try one outside because you can, why not? Um, and then I've got a tray of leeks for him to take to the allotment as well. And these, I have used a lot of them in the polytunnel just to fill the gaps. Um, so these are my excess leeks that he can go and put in the allotment. Nice to not have to throw things away when they're good quality plants. Um, so I'm just going to move these outside because that's getting full. And then the last thing to go to the allotment is a tray of Cavlo Nero. Um, so I'm just going to grab that. And these, you can see, they're quite big plants now and they're desperate to be taken out of these module trays and get in the ground and get some roots down. Um, so they will probably have to be covered at the allotment. Um, we'll have to get him some netting. But that's the last thing to go down to the allotment. Um, and he can have fun growing lots of vegetables. So the next category of things I'm gonna organize is stuff that I want to get in the ground in our garden. So this is things like annual flowers and a few vegetables as well. So I'm just gonna grab a tray. One of the main things I've sown this year is verbascum. Um, and this is a perennial with long, tall flowers. It's a mixed um, packet of seeds, so it'll be a few different colors. Um, but I found this so easy to grow from seed and I started them um, at the beginning of the year, I think it was February or March, um, just in the living room. 
and they're huge now and ready to go in the ground. So I'm going to pick out the biggest ones that I think will do well in the ground. And if you've grown these before, there's a few things I'd like to know about them that you might be able to help me with. I've heard that they're really good self-seeders and I want to know if the offspring change colour compared to the parent plant. So if you have these in your garden and you can let me know that, I'd love to know. Because um, I find growing foxgloves, offspring of the parent plant are always closer to purple because that's our native foxglove colour. So even if you grow white ones or pink ones, the uh, seedlings will often flower as purple. And I'm wondering if this is the same. Is there like a dominant colour? Um, so I want to know what they're going to look like when they're in the garden. Um, I also feel it's not ideal to be sowing mixed coloured things and just chucking them in, but I want to fill the space and have things that are good for the bees. So uh, that's a problem for me to deal with myself. Um, so I've got two, four, six, eight, eight of those that can go in the ground now. And I think I've got another 20 in the polytunnel as well, but I just want to clear space in here for now. So I'm going to put these outside. And then we've got vegetable plants that I'm going to put in the ground in the polytunnel. So that is the cucumbers that are looking, looking sturdy enough to go in the ground. So there's one here. Um, the tomatoes, I really need to get on with getting these in the ground. I've done way too many this year. So I might send some of these to the allotment for Aaron to try outside, see how he gets on. But chances are they might just get blight because they're not a blight resistant variety. But I'm going to take those because they... I need to do something with them. And that gives us a decent amount of space to get some seedlings in here, I think. So what we're left with in here is annuals that are almost ready to go in the ground. I haven't got a bed ready for them yet, so I'm doing that in the vegetable garden. And then in the next couple of weeks, once I've got some compost on that bed, I'll get those in the ground and have a cut flower patch this year too. So I'm going to be sowing some peas and beans. Um, the peas I just use as a kind of gap filler and I put these in the polytunnel. And then the beans, I think they're going to go to the allotment because we're short on space in the garden. Um, but I've got some seeds that I saved myself um, for the peas. Um, and then the beans, I've, I'm still on packet seed, but all of these, it's so easy to save the seed yourself um, and worth doing. So I will start saving some bean seeds as well. Um, I've got some compost that I've mixed with vermiculite and then these seed trays that are slightly deeper than usual. Doesn't really matter though. The minute they are, they grow so quickly, they can go into the ground really soon after they've germinated. And some trays to keep them watered. So I'm just going to fill the seed tray halfway with compost. I'm a little bit late doing beans compared to usual um, because I've been poorly and I've been feeling really jealous of everyone on Instagram who's um, done it before me and theirs are looking really good but that's the way social media is. And because I do struggle with mice eating these after I've sown them, I think I'll leave the, um, the seed trays in a few different places. So I'm going to try some of them in the greenhouse, some of them in the polytunnel and some of them in the shed. And I'm just going to firm the compost down. And let's start with um, peas because the, the bags split open and they're spilling everywhere, so that's easiest. So I'm just gonna take um, some of these peas. I saved these in 2021 and they just, I saved so many. Um, I'm still using them a couple of years later. I'm just gonna drop them on top of the compost. And then when I fill the tray, I will sprinkle some compost over the top of them. These are probably planted about a centimetre deep. And then um, I like to water these by filling the trays with water and just leaving the seed trays to soak in there so the water gets soaked upwards, otherwise it gets a bit messy, especially on my nice tables and things. So then these, um, these can have a label on and I use food um, packaging to make my own labels. Anything made of plastic, I just cut it up and this is from a pot noodle. <laughs> it just um, saves money, but also helps you reuse something that would otherwise go in the bin or be recycled. Um, and then a Sharpie as well. So I'll label these and then stick them in various places and then check on them over the next few days and weeks. So next I'm doing my French beans and these are a variety called Purple Teepee. 
These germinate so easily, you don't have to be too fussy about how much you cover them with. You just drop them in and get on with it. Um, but French beans are one of my favorite things to eat from the garden and they're such a rewarding thing to grow. If you're gonna grow one thing, I really recommend growing French beans, um, especially the dwarf variety. You don't need to even stake them or support them. They'll support themselves and you get loads of harvests from them. Um, again, these will probably go to the allotment just in the interest of saving space in the garden, but we'll see if I can uh, find some more space or open another bed. I might need to do that this year. There we go, we've got our seeds in, and now I'm just gonna cover these and stick a label on them and then water the tray. Last but not least, I am sowing climbing beans. These ones are called Blauhild. Um, they are a similar colour to purple teepee, um, the French bean, but this time they will be a metre or so tall, so they will need uh, staking. So I usually build some kind of tripod structures out of bamboo for these, and uh, or climb them up string in the polytunnel, depending on where we've got space. And you can sow these up until July. It's not really late, it's just I like to do them quite early. And I know people that sow them even later than that, especially if you've got a polytunnel and you can extend the growing season. I might give it a go sowing some later in the year so that we've got a longer harvest from them. So that one is climbing bean, blow hide. Next, I'm gonna fill the trays with water to water the seeds and find somewhere that seems safe for them to grow. So welcome to the polytunnel. Um, I wanted to show you in here because I've started planting things out and the tomatoes that I showed you from the small greenhouse are gonna go in the ground here. You can see I've done some of them already and um, it's way too hot to be doing anything in here now. I normally do them in the evening about 8 p.m. when it starts to cool down. But I thought I'd show you quickly. Um, I've got these bits of string that I've tied to some bamboo across the top of the polytunnel. I bury that under the tomato so it gives the plant something to climb up and then when I put them in the hole in the ground I fill the hole with a little bit of um, chopped up comfrey leaves just so that as the roots start to spread around in the ground they've got something to feed them. Um, so we've probably got about 10 plants in so far. I'm going to try and squeeze in another six. Um, I can take out things like this parsley that's gone to seed and this chard but I do like to leave them in a little bit longer just so that the flowers can appear. I want to save some seed from them too. Um, but the last thing I wanted to do with you today was a harvest. So in here you can see we've got some broad beans that are ready to pick and we've got a few other bits around the garden as well. So I'm going to grab my basket and we can pick those together. So we have a few broad bean plants in the polytunnel, not loads, but it was just something I put in to fill up the space over the winter that are ready now. Um, they're ready a little bit earlier than the ones in the garden. Um, so there's some really good sized pods on here that I'm just going to collect. And this variety is called Claudia. There's not going to be loads, so it's probably just going to be um, the sort of amount you'd want to have on your toast, maybe. Um, they're really nice, double podded and smushed up with a little bit of salt on the top. And this time of year, you just really want to kind of get these plants finished with and out of the ground so you can use the space for the tomatoes and the cucumbers and stuff that wants to take up space in the polytunnel. But it is amazing having a tunnel um, how much earlier you can pick things compared to out in the garden. And it is really feeling quite hot in here. I don't want to be in here for too long today. But good news for the tomatoes. The next thing I want to harvest with you is our garlic scapes. And uh, not all of these are ready, but a good amount of them are. Um, I'm in two minds as to whether to pick these this year, but I'm going to. Um, the reason you pick them is um, because you can eat them, they're quite nice fried, but also because it's supposed to divert the energy away from the flowers and into making the bulb bigger and then your harvest are bigger. Um, but I've read that um, argued online and people don't seem too sure about it. If you actually do a comparison and measure the difference between the two groups, 
Um, so I was tempted to leave them on and see what happens, but I don't want to take the risk because we've got such a lovely big harvest of garlic here. Um, so I'm just going to pick them and probably again have them on toast with a nice bit of bread. Um, I'll come out here again in the next few days to get a few more of them. Looks like we've only got four for now, um, but that's still a nice little snack. And then we can pick some asparagus too. The last thing to harvest is our asparagus and we come up here every couple of days and harvest it um, at the moment. Um, but since we've been away, some of it's got really, really long, <laughs> a bit longer than we'd usually leave it. So we just cut it um, as low as we can into the ground. And you can see that's massive. We wouldn't usually let it get that long, but we'll eat as much of that as we can. Um, and there's a few of those to pick. We actually planted these um, first thing in lockdown in 2020, which is why we're harvesting them now, because you have to leave it for a few years before you can fully harvest um, asparagus. They're nestled in amongst the broad beans, so a little bit difficult to find. Um, we've still got a few left in the house from picking them yesterday as well, so we're not expecting too many, but something we can throw in a risotto for dinner. So there you go, just a small harvest from the garden, but hopefully that is the start of many for the rest of the season. I'm feeling really excited about growing food and what's gonna happen in the polytunnel over the next couple of months. So make sure you stay tuned for that, but I hope you've enjoyed having a look around today. And if you want to see the progress that we make in the garden over the months and years, be sure to give us a subscribe and we'll see you next time for a rose tour.